Um, last April, in the Amsterdam Declaration, member states sent a resounding signal by the standards of these things on the need to step up cooperation to deliver, and I stress that word, a coherent European framework for the deployment of interoperable, connected and automated driving by 2019. This much you know. Industry, suitably challenged, I think, said that we can do it on a large scale if certain conditions are met. One of those conditions was that we come up in the Commission with a clear EU strategy for cooperative intelligent transport systems. Jackie, I don't know what an uncooperative and stupid transport system is, but this one is cooperative and intelligent. Again, it's a tall order because April to November in Commission times is not long. But I'd like to ask if any of you have been into Commissioner Bultz's office recently. It is literally festooned with CITS regalia. It is a shrine to CITS. My colleagues working on this, and I'd love to share the credit, but I don't think I really can, they knew that failure was not an option. And so it came to pass, almost biblically, yesterday, that the Commission did indeed adopt a strategy, yesterday, confirming the inherent brilliance of ACR in putting on this conference today. And thank you, by the way, for the very nice comments, I understand, that have been made along the way to the CITS strategy during the course of today. I must stress, unlike as written in Politico, the whole Commission adopted this strategy as part of the energy package. It wasn't just uh, the, the car heads in uh, Did You Move? But as we've heard today, uh, it's not just a question of doing it fast, it's also a question of doing it right. I don't want to repeat at length. We see this as a crucial tool in tackling our longer term mobility and transport challenges. The challenges of congestion, the challenges of emissions, the challenges of safety. Commissioner Bultz this afternoon in the Transport Council again berated member states, stressing the moral unacceptability of 26,000 deaths on Europe's roads, even if we have managed to cut that by 50% over the last 15 years. In the longer term, yes, and I hope you've concluded that, that today, this can also help integrate automated vehicles into the transport system as a whole. But in the shorter term, we can move ahead. We can move ahead with what we know using the current technology in terms of the CETS. It can hit some of the crucial things I know you've been discussing today, such as cybersecurity, such as data protection. I heard just a moment ago that this is the top issue for at least two of the panelists. These issues are understandably very much in the forefront of public concerns, together with interoperability, that great transport word, perhaps a little less in the public eye, but equally crucial if we're to create the right climate for investment and the right returns on investment, as we also heard today. In terms of immediate next steps, uh, I think the work is only just beginning. We've got a number of existing platforms, the CITS strategy, the ongoing work on the CITS platform, the ongoing work of the C Roads platform. What we need now to do with your help is to bring those work strands together, and we also need to get on with it. We're already seeing national deployment activities and the way through the Sea Roads platform, the first ever pan-European cross-border deployment initiative in this area, bringing together 13 countries, hopefully soon many more, all committed up front to interoperability. We're also doing pretty well in coordinating all the necessary R&I activities. We've made, for instance, very good progress on a roadmap for connected and automated transport under the Strategic Transport Research and Innovation Agenda, better known as STRIA. And then, of course, this is in turn complemented by the activities funded by the CEF, the Connecting Europe Facility. The 2016 call, by the way, which is still open, includes automation, and it seeks synergies that advance both connected and automated driving. And we've finally, on this point, we've heard today, you've banged the drum about the need for synchronicity between what's going on in the telecom sector and what's going on in the uh, automotive side. And again, while I say we can and we will get on with deployment now, also remember that in September, and I'm sure Roberto Viola mentioned that this morning, we adopted the 5G action plan, which will accelerate the deployment of the next generation of cellular communication, which should help us secure the future communication needs of all connected and automated vehicles. This is very good news. And to complete the picture, we will soon get the first recommendations from the GEAR 2030 export group on the car of the future. 
and the deployment of automation in what we think is going to be an excitingly inclusive future transport system. If I can just briefly, Jackie, illustrate this with respect to two things, safety and data protection. I think with this audience, I don't have to spare you the jargon. I had to check I understood it myself, but I want to talk about V2V and I want to talk about V2I, vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure connectivity. Um, you can see, I think, intuitively how important this will be to our safety agenda. I think we've all been behind cars, perhaps a bit too close, uh, taken, surprise, taken by surprise by the sudden braking. Now with V2V and V2I, we can hopefully anticipate that sharp curve in the road coming up, or more importantly, our cars can, and we can register the braking, the sharp braking of the car in front. Okay, sounds good in theory, but on the basis of EU-wide uh, deep testing and of uh, CBA analysis, it was, in, was concluded, and I think these are remarkable figures, that even under the baseline scenario, we would see a reduction of 5% in fatalities with full rollout, with perhaps a further reduction of no less than 7% of fatalities in the uh, event that the most favorable deployment assumptions prevail. Now, when you're talking about 26,000 deaths, 5% and 7% are very meaningful numbers. On data protection, uh, the issues of secure access to and reuse of vehicle data, protection of personal data, of course, um, paramount issues for you to talk about today. Uh, we see these issues obviously as closely connected to increasing connectivity, which should allow remote access to the huge amount of data which is gonna be generated by the vehicles. We've discussed a lot and I'm sure many of you were involved within the ITS platform, sorry, the CITS platform, the conditions for access to these vehicle data. And we've launched a follow-up study to help us understand what could be the, EU, the nature of EU actions in this domain. And we'll continue these discussions. It's going to be a very important topic for us. But I want to stress that we need to ensure that this access is uh, ensured in a secure, fair, and non-discriminatory manner. That's our goal. Of course, this is a general issue across all sectors and not just here. And the communication that I'm sure Roberto Viola mentioned this morning on these emerging issues, access and reuse of data, rights related to data, liability, they will help us pull together a general direction for transport as well. So I, I should stop. Uh, you've had a long day and the last thing you want is another bit of preaching from the European Commission. I'd just like to say, I think we're starting to see some very interesting developments coming over the horizon, or perhaps, as we say in transport, just around the corner. If Violetta Bulch was here and not stuck in the Transport Council, I think I know how she would conclude by challenging you, as she's challenged us, with the view that 2019 is nearly here. So let's get on with it. Thank you.